Good evening. I'm Elisa Hughley, and I run a health communications firm out of Washington, D.C. called In Bloom Media. And what inspired my talk tonight is the fact that I got really interested in bioethics when I was a teenager, and then my college internships were at a company that was the first to patent genetically modified corn, which I know isn't sexy now, but it was a big deal way back then. Okay. So, have you ever heard that phrase, just because we can do it, doesn't mean we should do it? That's exactly the approach that we should take when we're considering technologies and evaluating them. So, I want to address that with us this evening. There's always an endless dance between innovation and ethics for this very reason. And so, we're going to look at cell biology to regenerative medicine and everything in between. Innovation, it's a process that begins with creativity and leads to something of value for the community. And at the end of the 20th century, biotechnology collided with the internet to disruptive technologies to change our world forever. Technology in and of itself isn't good or bad, but we rely on our applications driven by our ethics to really determine what kind of society we're going to have. So, in 1990, with the beginning of the decoding of, of the human genome, we found that the policies at that time really leaned towards commerce and commoditization of technology. In fact, a decade before, the Supreme Court had already said it's okay to patent those recombinant DNA. Then we saw a divergence between Francis Collins and his publicly funded human genome project and then you all know Craig Vintner and Solera, a privately funded venture. But you can best believe the competition led to that decoding two years earlier than expected. And you can't believe what and how much our society is changing because of this. Just $3.8 billion was invested, and on the back end, we've already gotten $800 billion just in revenue. And it's leading us to this revolution in medicine and the promised land of personalized medicine, that is, the right treatment at the right time for the right patient. And you can't have this without genetic testing. There's already 600 genetic tests, different tests available today, and we all know how ubiquitous 23andMe has become, and it's only going to continue. Angelina Jolie is just the latest poster child for choosing to go with a preventative double mastectomy to prevent a future diagnosis of breast cancer as predicted by her own genetics testing. Unfortunately, the more data we generate, the more information we have, the more we have to worry about privacy, the more, we ha more vulnerable we are against would-be discriminators. But fortunately, in 2008, this is something I have to give W credit for, he signed the, genetics, the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act into law. And that's just one such protection that is the result of ethics leading us in a very positive way. But in our second example, we have heinous examples of the past. The syphilis study at Tuskegee, the Nuremberg, as well as the Henrietta Lacks case. It wasn't until the late 70s that we actually had protections for human dignity, fairness, justice. And when Henrietta Lacks was denied her privacy and her autonomy, she lost that, but then society gained HeLa, the most prodigious cell line ever in the existence of biotechnology research. But everybody is a patient at some time, and we all need information so that we can make informed decisions. Our final example is looking at tissue culture in the context of stem cell research to look at this budding new horizon of regenerative medicine. And as you can see, once upon a time, that wasn't so popular. But when you add that to the amazing ability of 3D printing with live tissue as the substrate, you can actually produce tissues and organs that can help people that are in end-stage disease, renal failure, heart failure, find a cure. 
But paradoxically, that same technology that can save lives, that same technology that can bring relief, is also the same technology that people can use to manufacture guns that uh, forego all detection and kill. So at the end of the day, it's our responsibility to foster science and health literacy so that we can guide our decisions. Innovation is only, only exists if we provide value to, to society. And what is it that society values? We've always depended on ethics to let us know. Thank you.